Hello and welcome to uh, Short Shift Broadcasting. This morning or afternoon, wherever you are, we're jumping into a, a Formula Renault 3. Point, uh, I'm sorry, Formula Renault 2.0 race in a, in Interlagos. And let's take a look at where we are exactly. Oops, and that should read something different there. And let's see if we can change that real quick. No, for some reason it doesn't do that. Okay, well anyway, uh, we are not at the E-Formula Series. We are at Interlagos for the Formula Renault 2.0. And uh, we are at the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache, well known as Interlagos. A track that is used for Formula 1 races. And uh, it's located in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The track length is 4.22 kilometers. The current track temperature is 22 degrees, which is not really all that hot. And um, the ambient temperature is also 22 degrees Celsius. We have a high humidity of 92%. Skies are clear and there is a 16 kilometer an hour wind that uh, may uh, hinder the drivers a little bit here. Uh, we are currently in qualifying, so let's go find uh, some guys that we might want to see uh, posting their best uh, time of two laps. It's individual qualifying so the drivers do not see each other on the track. And uh, we're looking at the number one car here of uh, Claudio Francesco Bivac. I hope I pronounce it correctly. A Italian driver and uh, he is currently uh, on his out lap trying to get something in. Beautiful paint job on that Formula Renault 2.0. And let me double check something here. Okay, everything looks like it's working. Claudio Francesco Bivac from Italy and the number one car looking to uh, post a time and he should be coming up to the start finish line here. There's a long uh, kind of a curvy uh, entrance to the main straightaway here. It's basically all out full throttle up to the highest gears seven gears in this car paddle shift uh, transmission a two liter Renault engine. And a, a beautiful car to uh, step up and get your uh, feet wet in open wheel racing. Into the first S's here. And it looks like uh, Bivak was actually already on his first timed lap there. He uh, posted a 132.15 as a quickest lap so far. So he wears that number one well. Let's go find some other guys here. This is uh, Ailey, Ayla Agren in a, a white car then we have ashley kendall here and ben hoffman in the number three car daniel halbritter currently in fifth and then currently in sixth is ivaka laginya i hope i pronounce it correctly you can uh, sue me if i didn't <laughs> piotr zimok uh, currently in eighth position, Pablo Loves, uh, or Loves maybe I should say, as he is from Iberia. And then in the tenth position currently, it's Alex Van, Ge Van Geen. And we have Pablo Cunha and Richard Scott from the UK. So these are the drivers that have currently posted a time in this qualifying session. And we have many others out there. This is Oliver Petrovich. And let's see who else we've got here. Andre Alexander Texira in the number 21 car. Working on posting his first time, my first lap time. And let's go bring back up here. 
Oops. There you have Agron's lap times. His second lap time was a tad slower than his first. And we can try to see how that was for uh, uh, Bivak. And also his second lap was a tad slower than his first. Not by much though, two tenths of a second. Daniel Halbritter. His second lap was better, actually quite an improvement on his first, almost half a second. That looks pretty good. So uh, once again, this is individual qualifying. The, the drivers get eight minutes uh, uh, time allocated for doing two laps, an out lap and two timed laps. And uh, the best of those two laps will determine their spot on the grid. And we currently have... Uh, Bivak on the provisional pole and the others uh, most of them have already posted their laps and there's still a few drivers here Mariano Garcia currently in the 11th position interesting paint job there and we still have Pablo Cunha on the track a Brazilian driver home race for him Miguel da Silva is still out there Perry Eidelbaum and a very famous livery Walter Lemons from the Benelux and it looks like Walter is done with his attempt here Garcia still out on the track let's see if he can he currently is in 11th position in uh, with a 135.6 and uh, that was his first lap 135.06 I should say and he's coming back around to finish his second lap here in this long sweeping curved area that leads up to the main straightaway first parts uphill second parts downhill you can tell there the complex the grid area here beautiful track very challenging it's got some uh, some tricky corners and it looks like uh, Garcia posted a 133.8 and he jumps up to the seventh position in qualifying so uh, qualifying pretty much under our belt here we still have uh, Miguel, de, Miguel de Silva on track oh, we lost him that's because the time has expired so let's take a quick look at the uh, starting grid for this formula Renault 2.0 there you have the uh, <laughs> the graphics corrected and uh, it's Claudia Bivak and Paul it's Oliver Petrovich in the second spot then the second row is for Agren and Kendall third row Van Geen and Hoffman fourth row Garcia Hallbritter and uh, the fifth row is Laginja and Loves or Loves, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And the the, uh, the uh, sixth row is for Sanchetti and De Silva. And then we have the seventh row for Zemok and Wold, Lemons and Bauer, Texira, Cunha, Scott, Phillips, and Edelbaum in the final position. Drivers are revving up their engines, trying to get st uh, get their uh, their uh, adrenaline pumping for this race here. Uh, it'll be a 20-lap event. It's an official race, so uh, incidents will uh, will uh, deduct from the guy's uh, safety rating. And if they finish well in comparison to the other drivers in the field, they will gain I rating. So uh, yeah, it'll it, it'll be uh, fun to see. These are ambitious open wheel drivers trying to uh, step up in racing here. And we're awaiting the lights. We still have a few open spots on the grid. That looks like Walter Lemons is still not there. And let's take a look at Bivac here. Pole position on the outside, which is a little unusual actually. For uh, most races, it's on the inside of turn one. But uh, in Interlagos, it's on the outside. There we go, the lights are getting ready, the cars are revving up, and as soon as the lights go out, we're racing. There we go, we are running, running. it's Claudio Bivac getting away very, very good here, 
It looks like he's going to go into turn one in the lead. There he comes. And it's Petrovic in second position, following suit. And then it's Agron in the third position. And he's got Kendall right on his tail there. He's trying to catch the draft, going to the inside here. And uh, Kendall takes that third position away from Agron already, side by side towards the next turn. And Kendall gets it done. He pushes it to the inside. And Agron has no choice but to follow right behind him he's uh, showing himself in the mirrors there a little bit making sure he can see what's happening in front and agron has already has ben hoffman right behind him there in that uh, brightly colored i would know uh, green and purplish car and it's daniel Hallbritter in the sixth position right behind uh, him bivak still on on the lead but he's being challenged now by petrovic in the second position and then it's about a second and a half back to Ashley Candle. And Ashley Candle is clearing from Agron. So let's stick here with the leaders. Petrovic challenging Bivak. Coming down to finish the first lap. Back on the main straightaway. Let's bring that up a little bit. Close together. They could tug in behind and try to catch some of that draft. He goes to the inside. Then he goes back to the outside. Tugs in to try and catch a draft towards the first turn. On the main straightaway to start of lap number two. And he's pushing it to the inside there. He takes the lead away from Bivak. That was a pretty cool move. Let's see if we can bring that back real quick. No, we cannot. Something is wrong here. Petrovic leading the race, taking the lead from Bivak here on lap number two. Coming into lap number two, it's Kendall still in third. He's pretty much clear of Hoffman. And, um, and Ben Hoffman is in fourth position. Agron is in fifth in the white car following, following uh, Hoffman in that brightly colored car. Pretty cool livery, I'll say that. And then it's Hallbritter and Loves. They are battling for 6th and 7th position. And some smoke coming up there. And it's uh, Alex Van Green mixing himself in there. It's Hallbritter running wide. And right behind there we have uh, Zimok and Da Silva. Let's bring it back up here to Loves and Van Green. Ooh, almost touching there. Van Green takes that position away from him, it seems. But it looks like uh, Loves has got a little bit better run off the turn. And he's still shown in front. He's nosing ahead there. They're side by side. And right there behind him, it's three cars battling for eighth position. It looks like De Silva noses it ahead of Halbritter there. Let's bring her back up to Van Green. Van Geen, I'm sorry. He's still ahead of Loves. Close battle here, and right behind there, it's Da Silva and Helbritter and Zimok. And they're battling for the 7th, 8th, and ninth positions. Close racing there. Very cool, very cool. And then further back in the field, we have Casper Wold. And there's another group here of some drivers fairly close together, starting with Pablo Kunha, Walter Lemons, Casper Wolt, Darren Bauer, and Richard Scott. And it looks like uh, Kuna is taking over that position from Lemons. Let's bring her back up to the front here. It's Petrovic still in front. He's about uh, a little under a second ahead of Bivak. Kendall is kind of lonely in third position. And then it's Hoffman, Agron running for the fifth and the fourth position. They are stretching out a little bit now. It's Van Geen on his own, Loves and Da Silva following behind there. It's uh, Halbritter. Oh, Halbritter and Da Silva look like they had an incident there. And that is Zimok. Let's see if we can bring that back real quick and see what happens. Ooh, it it's, uh, looks like it's uh, Da Silva running into Halbritter there. And then it uh, looks like it's Zimok run, not able to avoid the, uh, the Havoc and running into that as well. So, uh, back up to the front here, Petrovic and Bivak. 
And I need to check something real quick here. And sorry for the interruption in the scoring, but uh, we needed to check something real quick. And it looks like we're back here. And I have a little issue here with uh, some presets, but it's all good. Petrovic is still in the lead. It's Bivak in second place. And Kendall is, seems to be catching up with Bivak here. Ben Hoffman is behind them about two seconds down. Then a little under two seconds, it's Ayla Egren and Pablo Loves. Da Silva has... Uh, uh, Take Sarah right, right behind him and Van Geen in a pretty heavily damaged car. And it looks like he seems to be hanging on to that position. Uh, but it, it looks like he should really head to the pits and get himself some repairs. As long as he's running, I guess he's running. He doesn't want to quit. I can understand that. You want to save your I rating and you want to save your safety rating in races like these. And it looks like Petrovic is running the quickest of all. Let's take a look at his lap times. Uh, he's run a uh, 132.447. And that is three tenths of a second quicker than Bivak in the second position. Ashley Kendall. Ben Hoffman. In the uh, bright colored car here, he's running in fourth currently. And in the distance, you see, uh, you see Agrin. And then it's Loves in sixth, Miguel da Silva in seventh. Back up front here, Petrovic. Bivak in second position. There, let there be no doubt about the brand name of the car that he is driving. We are the Formula Renault 2.0 and he wants you to know it. And let's go back a little bit further here. We have Walter Lemons, and he's dealing with Holbritter and Scott. And that looks like a fight for position. And uh, it's uh, Lemons in ninth in the green car, and Holbritter in the red and white car, following in 11th position. They're uh, a little under a second behind this man here, Pablo Cunha, in, in ninth. And then a little bit further back behind Scott, we have uh, Richard Scott here in the red and white car, and he is being chased down by Zimok and Wold. And that's the battle for a 12th position. So we've got some battles going on here. Texera is way out in front of Cunha, but Cunha still has Walter Lemons and Hulbritter to deal with. And then Richard Scott has Wald and Van uh, Wald right behind him, and um, I think the third car you see there is a a lap driver. Uh, let me double check that for you. That is Zimok. Nope, that is Wald. So uh, Zimok here in the yellow card, following Scott in the red and white car. And then it's Casper Wold. Casper Wold is making a pass here on Zemok on the outside of the second part of that tricky first left, right, left. That is a pretty bold move. He takes that 13th position away from Zemok. That was a good pass. Now Zemok is coming back. No, not close enough. All right, so let's take her back up here to Texera and let's bring her back to uh, Cunha here with Walter Lemons still behind him at about six tenths of a second. So that's not as close as uh, what Casper Wold was doing. Casper Wold in the written white car following Scott now. And what happened to. Oh, he locks up a wheel there. And Zemok is still behind him. It looks like Wold is clearing Zemok now. So the field stretching out a little bit further. We're talking lap seven of 20. Getting close to the halfway point. It's Petrovic still in the lead. And Bivak is still in second. He is about 1.6 seconds behind the leader. And then it's Ashley Kendall in third position. Pretty much all by himself. He's got three, four seconds in front. Three seconds in the rear as a gap. Then it's Ben Hoffman. Same thing. And Elgren also, uh, he is about three and a half seconds behind Egren, and he's got about 10 seconds on the next car, the sixth position of Pablo Loves. 
Then it's Miguel da Silva, and it looks like there's uh, all kinds of stuff going on here with Cunha, Lemons. This is Lemons, this is Cunha, they caught up there, and it looks like Helbert are locked out there a little bit, and he's being followed by Casper Wald. No, I'm sorry, that's the wrong car. Oh, two guys touching here at the entry of this left-hand turn. That is Hellbritter, and that was Texera, and he's now losing a nose. So let's see if we can see what goes on here. And oh, he loses it on his own. That's not the incident I was looking for. Oh, Zemok has messed up here, and that's uh, coming on to the main straightaway. You can see that car being crooked. That's not going to bring him home. Back up to the front here. It's uh, Petrovic still leading, in with a, and his last lap was a 132.7. He's about a tenth of a second a lap quicker than the second place driver. Uh, Petrovic here, let's bring him back real quick. Petrovic in the lead. And behind there you see uh, Bivak, and he's still about just under two seconds shy of being, cl being uh, able to challenge Petrovic. Kendall then in third. Ben Hoffman still in fourth, Agron in fifth, Loves in sixth, and then it's De Silva. And some 10 seconds further back, it's Walter Lemons and Cunha still duking it out for the eighth and ninth position here. Lemons still hanging on to that. And this man right behind him that you're looking back at, uh, Pablo Cunha in the blue and white car with a red nose cone. And it looks like Lemons has taken somewhat of a defensive line. Cunha coming closer under braking. They're going up the hill here, a fast left-hander, and then they'll be going to a right-hander. And let's see if Cunha can close it in under braking once again. Uh, not quite. That's that's no more than he would normally do. And then will be a, a, a right turn and then a left turn. Short and sharp. Cunha running over the curbs a little bit more than Lemons is. And there you have Lemons. And Cunha is the blue car right there behind him. Tight turn here. And then it's full throttle through this uh, sweeping left turn towards another left turn. And that brings us back to the, st the start finish area. And uh, Lemons holding off Cunha. Good. The rest of the field is fairly stretched out here. There's not very many close battles happening at this point. Uh, Bivak is now uh, gaining a little bit, it looks like, on Petrovic, although his last time was a tenth slower than Petrovic. But he is under two seconds, a little bit better than he was before. So let's see if we can uh, see what's going on with Petrovic here. It looks like he's still running strong. He takes the curbs. The curbs on Interlagos are uh, are pretty good to take. They don't really upset the car that much. Bivak, uh, 1.6, 1.7 seconds behind the leader. And let's go back to the, uh, the battle here for 13th position. You're looking at Darren Bauer. And he's got Garcia behind him and Van Geen. And that's further back in the field, obviously, but it's a close battle. Ooh, and a Bauer taking a, uh, or Garcia taking a defensive line there for Van Geen. And uh, no change of position. I don't think Van Geen was close enough to be really doing anything. Van Geen closing in on Garcia a little bit, it seems. Not close enough to make anything happen. Very pretty paint job on that Formula Renault 2.0. Locks up a little wheel here. That's easy to do in these uh, high camber, fairly high camber turn there. And then it's Garcia challenging uh, Bauer, and he takes the position away from him. And then Van Geen does the same thing. He slices it underneath Bauer there and takes that 14th position away from him. And let's take a look at Richard Scott here. And then it's Garcia. That gap is about seven seconds. Bauer and uh, now it's Laguinha is behind Bauer. And he also seems to be closing in. Bauer's last lap time was a 
That's not exactly all that quick. Guys around him are faster, and it looks like Leguinha takes that position away from him going into turn one. Bauer seems to be in trouble. Let's see if we can find any damage on that car. It doesn't look like it, but he seems to be in trouble. Maybe his connection's not helping things at the moment either. Let's go up here to Garcia, who's closed in on Scott. And he wants to, but he's not close enough to go underneath there. You could tell he was trying to get there. Now he's getting close, getting that draft. He's on the outside. It looks like Scott was, a, or Van Geen, I'm sorry, was a little bit surprised here. Yeah, that's not, that's not uh, uh, Scott. I'm sorry, that was uh, Garcia is the, the first car. It's Van Geen challenging Garcia. Mixed up my names here. This is for 13th and 14th position. Locking up some tires there, Garcia. Some of these turns have a, a, a somewhat of a, a, a camber, and uh, when you turn in, that sometimes causes uh, the, the left front wheel to just kind of lift up. There's not much pressure or not much weight on that left front wheel, and that causes it to lock up pretty easy. And it looks like Garcia and Van Geen are handling that situation really well. And now it's Van Geen uh, trying to catch the draft. Going to the inside, going to the outside. It looks like Van Geen is uh, catching Garcia on the outside. Now we have a left turn. So, oh, and they touched. That was just what I was expecting to happen. Passing on a very tight turn on the outside is a difficult feat. You really have to leave your opponent some rooms. Otherwise, this happens and you get caught out. So Van Geen gets caught out. Let's bring this back real quick. He's on the outside. And it looks like uh, uh, Bauer just uh, didn't leave him. It was kind of late turning in, but, you know, the guy passing, he needs to make sure he can do so without causing any trouble. So uh, Van Geen has nobody to blame but himself here. Back up live. Let's bring her back to the lead. Petrovic is still in front, still about 1.7 seconds between him and Bivak. Uh, we're talking lap 12 of 20 at this point. Kendall is still by himself. He's now about 10 seconds behind the two lead cars. And three seconds behind him, it's Hoffman. And then it's Agren, about four seconds behind uh, Hoffman. Then it's Loves. He is uh, 15 seconds behind uh, Agren. Da Silva. Lemons is in the pits at this point. Kuna is ninth, and he'll be taking over that eighth position pretty quick. And it's Hallbritter in tenth position. Uh, back up front here with Petrovic. It looks like Petrovic is, uh, is fairly in control, although Bivak is coming a little bit closer here. Their last lap times were very, very uh, similar. 132.83 for the leader and a 31, 32.81 for Bivak. So they're very evenly matched. And let's find Bivak here. Another driver going into the pit. That is, uh, that looks like Garcia. Yep, that is Garcia going into the pits. He may have caught some damage. Petrovic in the lead here through the S's at the uh, first and second turns. Onto a straight that almost brings him to top speed, but not quite. And then a left left hander, and in this car probably a third or fourth gear turn here. And let's we can we can show you a little bit of the speeds and the gears. The cars are. Uh, Running about uh, 190, oh, about 200 miles an, uh, kilometers an hour here. Fifth gear turn, down, shifting to second or third. About 80 kilometers an hour through that kink. And we'll keep that on and let you. Have a look at how fast they're going on the main straightaway. Leader Oliver Petrovic from Germany, uh, Austria, or Swiss. Either one. Coming on the straightaway here. 
speed climbing up to over 200 kilometers an hour let's see what his top speed is sixth gear seventh gear they don't have an eighth gear seventh gear is their top gear and he reaches 224 kilometers an hour good speed Bivak right behind him still these are the intervals for the battle for first almost uh, 1.6 seconds between Petrovic and Bivak and then it's Kendall in third and he's about 12 seconds behind Bivak and let's go take a look at Pablo Cunha here he's got uh, Hallbritter all oh, about less little less than a second behind him and Lemons is further back out there's about 2.5 seconds between Lemons and Cunha and Cunha is uh, uh, currently a ninth with Hallbritter following him in 10th position Hallbritter with a little bit of damage from that earlier incident and then we have uh, Alex Van Geen challenging Bauer again and it looks like he passes Bauer for 13th position there Coming down the main straightaway, Bauer is going to have another look into turn one, but uh, Van Geen is far enough ahead not to be worried by that too much. And it looks like Bauer is dropping back about a second here. Probably overdid it in that first left-right-left -right -left section. It's easy to drift up high too much and get in the gray area and lose grip. nice livery and let's bring her back up front it looks like uh, Bivak is gaining a little bit on the leader it's now one and a half seconds and I think he he gains on certain sections of the track more than uh, any other let's let's see if we can bring up these sectors here so in the first sector whoops wrong drivers Petrovic and Bivak in the first sector it was actually Bivak gaining not by much though but he is gaining just a tad and that's the battle for the lead so Petrovic is not sure of this thing just yet we are uh, in lap 15 so six laps to go and let's see if Bivak can make anything happen here and then he loses out just a tad in sector four Let's finish the lap and see how they compare because the interval has in fact dropped down from almost two seconds to 1.3 seconds so in the final sector uh, it looks like Petrovic is quicker in the uh, in the fourth and fifth sector and gaining back a little bit of what he loses in the first three that is interesting it could be setup differences it could be driving style differences but uh, Oliver Petrovic is not quite sure of this race just yet. He looks to be in control, but uh, Petrovic is still there. And, uh, and uh, he's not giving up. He's still chasing down the leader and running as hard as he can. And um, as you can see, we currently have uh, only six drivers left on the lead lap, it looks like. Uh, the number eight car is shown a lap down if I see that correctly let's bring her back up here to uh, let's take a quick look here at Hallbritter who is chasing Cunha he's still pretty close and although his car is damaged he looks like he's keeping up with Cunha oh, both of them on the curbs pretty hard that is one of the curbs that you really want to miss and it looks like Hallbritter despite that damage is hanging in there with uh, Cunha for ninth position fairly good Cunha taking a bit of a uh, alternative line there to make sure that he's uh, showing Hallbritter hey man you're not getting by here all that easy I will defend my position
looks like Bauer is not really being a, a big problem for uh, Van Geen at this point. Ooh, wait a minute. We have uh, Van... I wasn't... Oh, we were watching Cunha. This is, uh, this is Van Geen. And it looks like Bauer has dropped back behind Van Geen now. And it's uh, Garcia further back. Uh, he, he's actually out of the race. The last running car is the 14th position of Bauer. There he is. Had his fair share of problems. Let's take a look here at Scott. Running quite by himself here behind Casper Wold. And then it's Cunha, and it looks like Helbritter has passed Cunha here. Uh, we missed that. But, uh, yeah, he, he's brought it by Cunha. I'm sure Cunha may have had a little incident. Uh, and it looks like Petrovic had a little trouble with a back marker here. And he does pass him. It seems like they touched wheels. And that actually brings us to a battle for the lead because Francesco, Claudio Francesco Bivac is challenging the leader now in the first turn and he takes that position away from Petrovic. Petrovic is not giving up just yet. Tugging in behind uh, Bivac for the straight here. We had a pass for the lead. Now he's tugging in trying to catch that draft. Bivac taking a defensive line. Letting uh, Petrovic know that, no, you, if you want to do it, you want to do it on the outside, because I'm not letting you on the inside. Uh, the tricky part of that is this. What happens here is that P Bivak runs a little bit wide off of that turn. Now it's Petrovic coming alongside on the outside. It's, it'll be a right turn, so that would be a pretty brave move. This is a tricky part of the track. It's slippery, and it looks like Bivak has got that lead in hand now with Petrovic following, and I think it was caused by the fact that Petrovic was hindered by a back marker that was a little bit uh, unclear in where he was going to let Petrovic pass, and that cost him some time, and it enabled uh, Bivak to catch up and, and catch him on the first turn there of the 18th lap, so it's, Pet it's Bivak, the pole sitter, is back out in front in Interlagos here. And it looks like he's pulling away from Petrovic little by little. Let's see if we can bring those lap times back up again. Yeah, it's definitely Bivak, uh, been quicker in the last three laps. We were watching him earlier in lap 14. And in the, in the three laps after that, it looks like Bivak has been quicker than Petrovic by a little bit under a second in the... 17 and in the final in the last lap by a little bit over a second even so Bivak is making good work of this race here oh back marker having some connection issues there the red and white car blinking hopefully this is not going to hinder Bivak too much and uh, we're coming up here in on the lap number 19 the next time by they'll get the white flag for the final lap let's see if Bivak can hold on to that lead here in front of Petrovic Petrovic is only five tenths of a second, half a second behind there. The back marker goes out of the way beautifully. That's that's what you want to see. Don't interfere with the uh, the race for the lead, especially in this late uh, part of the race. There's just absolutely no point to interfere with the leaders racing for the win. So good job for that back marker. I believe that was uh, Scott. And uh, Petrovic is hanging on here. He's dropping back a little bit in this section. It looks like Pe Bivak is quicker. We can bring up the sectors here real quick. Yes, you can clearly see that. Oh, no! It's Bivak going around, coming off of that turn there. Too early on the gas. Oh, my gosh. That is going to cost him the, the race. Let's bring that back here if we can. Here it is. He comes off that turn, gets on the throttle too enthusiastically. That's the last turn before the straightaway. And he loses it. And it gives the lead back to Petrovic. He is now running in first position. Got the lead back due to that mistake from Bivak. Final lap is running. All Petrovic has to do now is bring it back to the finish line bring it back to uh, to uh, finish the race. He is now um, a good five and a half, five point three 5.3 seconds clear of Bivak. And that was a dearly costly mistake for Bivak. That was very unfortunate. 
And meanwhile, it's Kendall still in third, it's Hoffman still in fourth, Agron still in fifth, Loves in sixth. Da Silva has worked his way up past Halbritter, and he's now running in the seventh position. Halbritter has worked his way up to eighth, and then it's Lemons in ninth, and Casper Wold, Wold is in tenth position. Let's bring it back up to the front here. We are in the closing stages of this race. The final part of the last lap. It's Oliver Petrovic in the lead. Bivak is hanging on to uh, the second position. He's gaining a little bit. I'm sure Petrovic is not going all out anymore. He doesn't have to. He's just saving it. He's just bringing it home. He's consolidating here. And Bivak is going to gain a little bit on him. But it doesn't really matter. It's the final lap. It's Olivier Petrovic who run a hard race, hard but fair race here, and uh, got passed by Bivak early on, and then uh, Bivak made that little mistake. It's Petrovic bringing it home in the first position. Bivak is bringing it home in second. Then we're waiting for Ashley Candle bringing it home in the third position here. And uh, let me see, then it's uh, Ben Hoffman bringing it home in fourth, Agron in fifth, and Loves still on the final stretch here. He's going to bring it home in the seventh position. Miguel, Miguel da Silva is about a second and a half behind, so that's not going to be making any difference anymore. Da Silva will bring it home in the eighth position, and then Halbritter will bring it home in the, uh, I'm sorry, that's Halberter in eighth, De Silva in seventh. No, sorry, De Silva in seventh, Halberter in eighth. I'm sorry. And then Lemons is ninth and Wold is tenth. And it looks like everybody has finished but Halberter. He should be coming down. And there he is, coming down past the pit entry, bringing that crippled car home in a, a respectable eighth position that is not bad at all so there you have it ladies and gentlemen the results for this race is uh, Oliver Petrovic takes a win Bivak has really caused himself to luck out here a little bit made a little mistake on the uh, final lap Bivak is in second Kendall is in third that's your top three finishers from Interlagos, this is blip shift. I'm sorry, short shift. We used to be called blip shift. This is short shift broadcasting. My name is Mark. We hope you enjoyed this race. Uh, I apologize for the scoring issue hiccup that we had earlier in the race. We'll get it all sorted out for next time, and we hope to see you then. Thank you so much.